once again welcome to my channel as i mentioned in my previous lecture i will be back with the part 2 of this topic that is meat for health in this topic i am going to talk more advanced aspect of meat on health especially the bioactive components or functional con components which are present in milk and which plays very important role in human health so we are going to talk more deeper aspect on some of the important role of meat in human health so in this lecture i am going to cover the 5 to 8 in the previous lecture part 1 i have discussed about 1 2 3 and 4 and partly about 5 that is the meat as functional food in this lecture i am going to talk some of the important functional components in meat and many of them are bioactive peptides most of these bioactive peptides has important physiological role and some of them are antioxidants and at the end I am going to make some important remark, conclusions and futuristic scope of the meat for the human health. Here once again briefly I want to talk as meat as functional food. In the previous lecture, I have mentioned about it. Some food which has got extra physiological function, they are considered as functional food. And in meat, there are a lot of important functional components like omega-3 fatty acid. It has got different important role in the health. So it is not just food. It is a functional component which we have discussed previously. Similarly, conjugated linoleic acid, which is a very important fatty acid present in ruminants, either milk and meat and they have very important physiological roles. Similarly, there are many bioactive peptides. Most of these bioactive peptides has got special physiological role or function and many of them act as antioxidant and there are other micronutrients, especially some of the vitamins and minerals which I have discussed. So in this lecture, we are going to focus more on the bioactive peptides and many of them as antioxidants. So this part we are going to focus in more details in this lecture. And I wish to mention here that functional meat production through dietary manipulation. In modern agriculture or modern animal husbandry practices, there is a new trend of improving the meat and make the meat more functional. So in one of the approach, the animal production itself they are trying to manipulate through feed by supplementing all the important components which goes and deposit in the meat and that meat becomes functional. Similarly, functional meat products are prepared during processing. In this case, during processing, different functional components are added by fortification and then such products become functional meat. So this is the background, then we will go for the other aspect like bioactive peptides. So bioactive peptide is the main focus in this lecture and these bioactive peptides are formed during processing especially during the process of fermentation whenever we make any fermented meat products or sometime they are um, uh, coming from the digestion process small peptides they can be absorbed or sometime they are formed after the absorption of amino acids. So these bioactive peptides are very important source from the meat and they have multiple roles in human health like hypocholesterolemic. It can reduce the cholesterol, antihypertensive, diabetes prevention, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, even antimicrobial, very common bioactive peptides. Sometimes they are anti-cancer or immunomodulatory. On the other side, presence of these bioactive peptides can improve the sensory properties and sometimes they can increase the cell life by virtue of their antimicrobial property. So we will read and understand more about them. Once again, let us understand about these bioactive peptides. So these peptides are coming either due to the processing I said, food processing or due to the fermentation or sometime in vitro digestion or some we, we prepare the hydrolyzed proteins and the in vivo digestion. Now these bioactive peptides in the one side it has an impact on the food quality. They become a part of the browning reaction or also called non-enzymatic browning or Mellard reaction. Through this it can give color and also it has an impact on the sensory quality. On the right hand there is 
impact of bioactive peptides like its role on the cardiovascular system I have mentioned previously that is antihypertensive, antioxidant, hypocholesterolemic and antithrombic activity. In the nervous system it can be having agonist activity or antagonist activity. In the immune system it has immunomodulatory or cytomodulatory role. In the gastrointestinal system it can have the role of mineral binding or antimicrobial or anti-appetizing. So these are different aspects of bioactive peptides which plays important role in human health. Here we will see some peptides which act as angiotensin converting enzyme and inhibit them and thereby it can control the blood pressure. So in the blood pressure mechanism there are two pathways. One is renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway and the right side another one is kinin calicrine system. In the first one renin angiotensin mechanism whenever the blood supply is reduced in kidney the kidney releases renin hormone that acts on the angiotensinogen coming from liver and convert it to angiotensin 1. This angiotensin 1 get converted to angiotensin 2 and that causes the vasoconstriction and increase in blood pressure. Now in this process angiotensin converting enzyme playing a very important role. Now some meat bone peptides can inhibit this enzyme and prevent the formation of angiotensin 2 and thereby can prevent the increase in blood pressure. Similar mechanism works through adrenal cortex also by increasing the aldosterone secretion and reducing the reabsorption of sodium and uh, water by increasing their absorption and blood pressure is also increased. Whereas in the right side there is a mechanism to decrease the blood pressure through kinase kininogen which acts on bradykinin and that get converted to inactive peptides by the presence of angiotensin converting enzyme. Now if this peptide is present it can prevent this enzyme and this inactivation can be prevented. And in that case bradykinin uh, goes to form prostaglandin synthesis which causes vasodilation increase and there is a decrease in the blood pressure possible. So this is how the bioactive peptides can help in controlling the blood pressure. Here we will understand about the antioxidants in meat. In meat there are lot of small peptides or other minerals or vitamins present and act as antioxidant. One of the important is carnosine which is a small peptide and plays important role. They are present in very good amount in all the meat. Similarly, vitamin, vitamin B2 that is also act like antioxidant. I have mentioned about selenium in the previous lecture. It is present in good amount and it acts as antioxidant and manganese, another trace element which is present in minute quantity in meat and it plays very important role as antioxidant. So all these antioxidants has got supportive role in our health along with the endogenous antioxidant and to help us remove the free radicals and prevent the damages and aging. Now we will understand about the role of antioxidant peptides in health. Some of these we are going to discuss in more details like carnosine has a role in retinal health and carnosine, anserine and creatine has a role in renal health, cardiovascular health, neurological health, skeletal muscle health, metabolic health, immune system health. 4 hydroxyproline it has a role in immune system, gastrointestinal health, skin health, bone health, health of other connective tissue. The taurine this is a very special amino acid which has important role in retinal health, renal health, cardiovascular health, neurological health, skeletal muscle health, metabolic health, immune system and carnosine which we have already discussed. So these are some of the important bioactive peptides which plays role as antioxidant and have immense potential in our health which we are going to discuss more details later. Now we will discuss about carnosine. Carnosine is a bioactive peptide that is a dipeptide made up of beta alanine and L histidine. So beta alanine can come from breakdown of any other components like thymidine, uracil and other dietary dipeptides either from meat. In the liver it is 
coming out as a beta alanine and the blood stream normally from the digestion of protein essential amino acids are produced and reaching to the blood through which comes the l histidine so these together beta alanine and l histidine joined together by carnosin synthase and produces carnosin this carnosin can deposit in the skeletal muscle or in the brain so that is how from the meat directly we can get this source and it has endogenous cytoplasmic dipeptide it is very important in certain function which we are going to see here once again we can see the biosynthesis pathway for carnosin so either through supplement or it can come from the meat and other proteins so these amino acids are produced through the digestion and absorbed and then it reaches to the vascular system and from where it reaches to the muscle either there is biosynthesis in the muscle or in other tissues and get deposited as carnosin and this carnosin has important physiological role in our health here the mode of action of carnosin is depicted in the top left side we can see that carnosin can act with other antioxidant enzymes like glutathione or superoxide dismutase many other antioxidant system and it acts on the reactive oxygen species or neutralization of free radicals sometime it can act through ion or copper sometime through glutathione in its reduced form or sometime through magnesium oxide or other uh, strong antioxidant systems or enzymes so through different pathway carnosin can function and help in reducing the free radicals or quenching the free radicals and reducing the reactive oxygen species and maintain the better health here is another important bioactive peptide that is carnitine carnitine has a very special role in metabolic pathway especially in fat metabolism so here the blue portion is the mitochondria and the yellow portion is the cytoplasm normally in the cytoplasm the energy production takes place through tca cycle but as and when required the fat also undergo the metabolic process to produce energy so whenever fat oxidation is required it is called beta oxidation in this process carnitine plays very important role and this mechanism takes place inside the mitochondria in this process the carnitine acts along with the fatty acid coenzyme a and taking the fats inside the mitochondria from which the energy is produced so carnitine plays important role between the krebs cycle and the beta oxidation for the production of enzyme here once again the mechanism of action of carnitine is explained the outer yellow is the outer membrane of mitochondria and the inner yellow is the inner mitochondrial membrane between these two membrane there is a important mechanism going through by as fatty acyl coenzyme a and the carnitine so this carnitine along with coenzyme a plays important role for transporting the fatty acids and bringing them inside the mitochondria for the production of in energy through the beta oxidation so that's this is how the carnitine plays very important role in alternative oxidas, uh, oxidation or energy production in the mitochondria especially from the fat source now we will talk about another important amino acid which has got physiological role that is called taurine so taurine is truly not a amino acid here in place of carboxyl group it has got a sulfonyl group so sometime it is considered as amino acid though it is a pseudo amino acid so this is the structure and it plays very important role some of the aspect we are going to discuss we have seen the structure of uh, taurine this is abundantly available through seafoods meat egg chicken cheese and milk that is the foods of animal origin they are rich in taurine and the benefits are like it is it acts like antioxidant it is having a detoxification role in the body it can reduce the diabetes or sugar level it has a role in eye disease and it has a role in male fertility so little more details we will see next 
the mode of action of taurine. It acts in four different aspects. One is cellular redox homeostasis that is in solving the cellular stress due to the uh, oxidative products. Then muscle regeneration in muscle degeneration and in exercise performance. <coughs> A taurine in, in, in cellular redox homeostasis and muscle function here we can see that it has a role in antioxidant defense, in reactive oxygen species overload, in lipid peroxidation, in inflammation, in muscle atrophy, in apoptosis, in myogenic differentiation. Then it is having a role in post-exercise recovery. Nowadays everybody does bodybuilding exercise. It has a role in excitation, contraction, coupling and it has a role in mitochondrial bioenergetics that is the energy production mechanism. So taurine has got so many roles in the system especially on the energy production and oxidative products and muscle regeneration. Here once again we will see the action of taurine. It acts like osmolite in ion channels, in intracellular calcium regulator, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-proliferative and anti-endoplasmic reticulum stress. Its main target tissues are like in the CNS, it has an inhibitory action. In heart it increases the ionotropism and antirhythmic action. In vascular system, vasorelaxation and reducing the blood pressure also atherosclerotic plaque. It, in immune system, it has got an immunostimulant action. In liver, it is having a role in bile salt synthesis. In skeletal muscle, it increases the skeletal muscle performance, control of membrane excitability, control of phenotype properties. In genitourinary system, it has a role in stimulating the fertility and in pancreas it increases the secretion of insulin. So it has got versatile role in different system, taurine. Now we will discuss about another bioactive components which is rich in meat that is the coenzyme Q10. And in short it is called CoQ10. Most of the foods of animal origin is a good source of it, especially the beef muscle, liver and heart has got very high amount, otherwise also in pork, muscle, heart, chicken, breast, wing and different feces also to some extent a good source for this coenzyme Q10. So coenzyme Q10 is a combination of several vitamins which has got many vital roles which we are going to discuss. Here is some details about coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is a fat soluble compound primarily synthesized by the body and also consumed in the diet. Coenzyme Q10 is a member of the ubiquinone family of compounds also known as ubiquinone or ubiquinol. All animals including humans can synthesize ubiquinones hence coenzyme Q10 cannot be considered a vitamin. Coenzyme Q10 is required for mitochondrial ATP synthesis and functions as an antioxidant in cell membranes and lipoproteins. So though it is synthesized inside, many times it is not enough or many times there can be some differences or deficiencies. That time the dietary supplement plays a very important role. Here we will see the mode of action of coenzyme Q10 which is also known as ubiquinone or semiquinone or ubiquinol. So it has got different status of existence. It has a role in mitochondrial electron transport. It has a role in lysosomal pH maintenance. It acts in plasma membrane and cell redox potential that is the oxidation reduction status. It plays a role in signaling the modulation of gene expression. And it also acts as antioxidant and also support vitamin E and vitamin C in the oxidation antioxidant because whenever the vitamin E or vitamin C acts, it gets oxidized. Now this CoQ10 bring them back to reduced form and make them active. Similarly, it has role in apoptosis that is the program cell death, modulation of the mitochondrial permeability, transition pore, etc. So coenzyme Q10 has role in different areas in our health. Here is 10 incredible health benefits of CoQ10. Number one, boost energy and stamina. Number two, reduces aches and pains, all kind of pains in the body. 
increases libido and fertility, balances your mood. So it has a role in mood elevation. It improves cardiovascular function. Number six, enhance, enhances cognitive function. Number seven, combats headaches. Number eight, supports healthy vision and hearing. Number nine, improves oral health. And number 10, promotes smooth and youthful skin in the normal skin maintenance. Overall, this coenzyme Q10 virtually has no side effect even if we take in higher doses. So these are some of the important health benefits of coenzyme Q10. Now we will discuss about the last bioactive component that is the glutathione system. This is present in our system as endogenous antioxidant and it can be also obtained from the food or from the meat. So this is a combination of three amino acids. First is glutamic acid joins with cysteine with the help of glutathione cysteine ligase and then later another glycine is joined by the help of glutathione synthase and then it forms the glutathione as a antioxidant enzyme system. Now whenever it acts on the oxidized molecule or on the free radicals, it himself gets oxidized. Now once it is oxidized, it is again brought back to reduced form by the glutathione reductase. And glutathione reductase again get converted to oxidized glutathione by the use of glutathione peroxidase. So this is a cycle which helps in scavenging the free radicals and maintaining the oxidative stress at a lowest possible level. And this is the mechanism in our system, inbuilt endogenous enzyme which acts as antioxidant. Here we can see the overall function of glutathione that is the thiol redox status like it acts on the antioxidant defenses cell proliferation and apoptosis in membrane transporters, immune regulation, signal transduction, receptor modification, protein structure and activity, and xenobiotic metabolism. So in different aspect, it has a role in our health. So glutathione plays very important role as an antioxidant system in our body and it is also received through food especially from meat and the important roles played by this glutathione is like number one liver health and fatty liver disease number two in it supports the healthy growth and repair of every cell number three it may improve the insulin sensitivity of the cell and thereby it can prevent the diabetes and number four it reduces the oxidative stress level it acts on the free radicals and scavenge them and thereby reduces the oxidative stress. And number five, reduces the inflammation and risk of chronic diseases. Whenever there is chronic inflammation, that leads to the tissue damage, aging and other diseases. So glutathione is a very important antioxidant system present in the, our body and also it is available through food, especially from meat. So at the beginning I discussed that oxidation is an unavoidable life process and which produces the free radicals and which are the major threat for our aging, disease and death. So naturally we have antioxidant system inside and also antioxidant supplied through food and these together saves us from this degenerative process. So here once again I want to repeat that endogenous and exogenous antioxidants are interdependent. Here we can see that in the mitochondria there is vitamin E, manganese and superoxide dismutase glutathione. They all are antioxidant working together. Some are naturally present inside, some are coming from outside through food. Same is the case in case of lysozyme where vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene and glutathione is present. In case of DNA there is a lot of damage due to oxidation. So that is prevented by again antioxidant like vitamin E and beta carotene. Similarly, in paroxysomes, there is catalase as antioxidant and along with that, there is SOD, superoxide dismutase. So, internal antioxidant and external source of antioxidant together only giving a support against oxidation process and saving our life as long as possible. Here we can find a list of supplements which are given to 
heart failure patients so all of them has got important role in protecting especially as their mechanism of antioxidant so most commonly used like coenzyme q10 vitamin d l carnitine probiotics n3 pufa that is the omega 3 polyunsaturated fatty acid l carnosine vitamin b1 iron manganese vitamin e vitamin c most of these are of animal origin so all these component they can be considered as bioactive components some are peptides some are non peptides most of them has got antioxidant property and other physiological some uh, role and that is how they can support in case of heart failure and that is how they play important physiological roles in our health here briefly i want to throw some light about the future of health and nutrition so our basic focus is the food food is playing very important role in nutrition but beyond that it has role in maintaining the health and in physiology so future is changing very fast so there is a focus on personalized nutrition every individual there can be separate specific target oriented nutritional approaches so there are application of nutri genetics the modern science nutri genomics the application of genomics in nutrition then industrial products there is genome wide association studies there is omics technology there is application of development of biomarkers and gene diet interaction so in earlier some stage i have mentioned that food or especially some nutrient can have influence on the gene expression so these are the focus area for future for our health and nutrition here i leave certain points to ponder in the left side why is in nutrition taken seriously by the medical profession as we all know in our medical curriculum the nutrition is given less importance the medical professional don't learn to that extent about nutrition so medicine is reductionist dependent on targeted drug therapy and third person healthcare whereas nutrition is holistic dependent on comprehensive nutrition function and first person healthcare and if we think in the right side why is in nutrition taken seriously by the nutrition science profession so this is very interesting because it is far too much corporate interference the nutrition aspect now it has become nutritional supplement and nutraceuticals which is fully under the control of big industry so nutrition research and policy is seriously corrupted at the expense of human health this is an area we need to think upon here are some of my final remarks the take home or you can say as the conclusion meat is extremely rich in essential bioactive components which plays essential physiological function oxidative damages is best protected by antioxidants many of them are available from muscle foods work in tandem with endogenous antioxidants moderation is important to avoid harmful effects of meat however the per capita consumption of meat in india is so low that it's not of concern and finally consumption of meat being rich source of bioactive components improves the health status and reduces the risk of developing many diseases so meat is very important for perfect health especially countries like us where the consumption level is very less here is a final point that is about the future focus the modern science which is beyond genetics or we call epigenetics here it proves that even beyond food beyond nutrition we have the power to regulate the gene expression so this is our the power of the mind power of emotion through this we can even control the expression of gene that's what is epigenetics sometime we will discuss more details about it thank you